Hello everyone, I'm Ishwari. In this video, you're gonna learn how to identify atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and bundle branch blocks on an ECG. I will also explain the mechanisms involved. If you feel your basics aren't strong enough, please take a look at my previous video. Let's begin. Atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter are pathologies involving the atrium. So, the QRS complex will look relatively normal. In atrial fibrillation, there are multiple foci which generate electrical impulses. These impulses drive the atrium crazy and it beats very fast and irregularly. The most common source of these foci is the pulmonary vein. In atrial fibrillation, the time between two consecutive QRS complexes varies. Atrial flutter, on the other hand, has a more uniform pattern. This is because in atrial flutter, there is only one source of electrical impulse. The issue is that this one source produces impulses at an extremely high rate. The AV node is the place where electrical impulses get delayed. Till the time the AV node allows impulses to enter the ventricles, these impulses move in a circular motion in the atrium. This gives rise to a pattern which looks something like this on an ECG. Here, the time between two consecutive QRS complexes are equal. When we think about bundle branch blocks, we should always look at leads V1 and V6. V1 is towards the right side of the sternum and V6 is on the left side. Since these two pathologies involve the ventricles, we should always look at the QRS complex. Usually, the electrical impulse comes into the ventricles via the AV node. The septal current depolarizes the right side first. Since the impulse is towards the right ventricle and towards V1, there will be a positive deflection seen on V1. Since it is away from the left side and away from V6, there will be a negative deflection seen on V6. Then, the impulses move to both sides of the heart. The left ventricle is thicker than the right ventricle. So although the impulses are traveling in both the ventricles, the neck current is towards the left. In other words, towards V6 and away from V1. Hence, this will be upwards in V6 and downwards in V1. After both the ventricles get depolarized completely, the waves return back to normal. So this is how the QRS complex looks like on V1 and V6 in normal cases. In patients with right bundle branch block, the septal current is the same. So the first part is normal in both V1 and V6. When impulses start traveling further, the left side is normal so it's pretty smooth. But there is a block right here. The impulses will slow down on the right side. Since the left ventricle is thicker than the right, the net current is towards V6. So, there's a negative deflection in V1 and a positive deflection in V6. Due to the block, the duration will be longer. So, the QRS interval is wider in case of right bundle branch block. Eventually, the impulses travel to the right ventricle in this direction. This is towards V1 and away from V6. So, a positive deflection is seen in V1 and a negative deflection is seen in V6. After complete depolarization, the waves will come back to normal. In case of left bundle branch block, the septal depolarization is on the opposite side, that is, towards the left side. So, it will be downwards in V1 and upwards in V6. Since there is a block on the left side, the signal spreads to the right side first, giving V1 a positive deflection and V6 a negative deflection. 
Then there is a movement of impulses to the left side, resulting in a larger wave which looks something like this. I remember this by the mnemonic William and Marrow. The first alphabet represents V1 and the last alphabet represents V6. If you look at this picture carefully, you can see how the QRS complex in V1 looks like a W and in V6 looks like an M in case of left bundle branch block. The QRS complex in V1 looks like an M for right bundle branch block and looks like a W in V6. Pulmonary embolism can have a right bundle branch block. This is because in pulmonary embolism, the right ventricle gets distended due to fluid overload. There could also be subendocardial ischemia of the right ventricles. So to summarize, for the left and right bundle branch blocks, always take a look at leads V1 and V6 and always look at the morphology of the QRS complex. Whenever an impulse is travelling towards a particular lead, there will be a positive deflection on that lead and if it's travelling away from a lead, there will be a negative deflection. I hope this video was helpful. Please give it a thumbs up to show me your support and subscribe to my channel for more med videos, quizzes and study tips. Thank you.